Marshalling yards play an important role in railway freight transport. They present nodes which connect different parts of rail freight network. There are many reasons why they exist on most national rail networks. For example, if there is a need to transport some goods from points A, B, C to point D, if the distance is very long between these points and there are enough goods for just three rail cars, it is not profitable to run trains from each point to the final destination. Instead of it, imagine that there is marshalling yard somewhere between these points. This means that it is more logical to transport these goods from points A, B, C to marshalling yard, disassemble these trains and complete only one train of nine cars which will deliver goods to the final destination D. There are usually more cars, but this is just for illustration. There are three different types of marshalling yards. First one is traditional marshalling yards, also called shunting yards. Second is railroad terminals or called intermodal terminals. And third is fully automated rail transshipment yards. Second and ter third type of marshalling yard actually works with standardized loading units called containers not with the cars as loading units, just as a means of transport. This video only describes traditional marshalling yards. Traditional marshalling yards can also be divided on three different types. First one, hump yards, second, flat yards, and third, gravity yards. Hump yard can be divided in three different parts. In this place, all inbound trains are disassembled and rail cars and then are then assembled in different train units to generate outbound trains. First part on the left side presents receiving tracks. This is the place of arrival and disassembling of inbound trains. The set of rail cars that enter on some specific receiving track is called a cut. All rail cars that come to a specific receiving track are inspected by the yard staff for any defects and decoupled after. After that, when the process of decoupling is finished, rail cars are ready to be classified. When they will get classified depends on a few factors, such as effectiveness of the marshalling yard, capacity of classification tracks, etc. In the middle, we have so-called classification tracks. This is the place where rail cars go after they leave receiving tracks. They are classified on different tracks in the middle section. This is one of the most important tasks in marshalling yard. But before they arrive in this section, there is a hump in between receiving and classification tracks. On the yard, rail cars are usually moved by shunting engines or station locomotive. This limits usage of these engines and locomotives, so response for this is making humps. This means that rail cars are pushed from receiving tracks and they go over the hump and under the gravity they go to the classification tracks. After the hump is over, there are many turnouts that lead rail cars to desired tracks. But sometimes it happens that rail cars are pushed too hard and that there is a big chance that they will hit other cars in classification tracks with big force. This could lead to serious incidents. In order to prevent this after the hump but before the turnout, station brakes are installed, specifically called retarders. The main task of these brakes is to reduce the speed of rail cars before they approach the turnout and after that on some of the tracks in classification part. Not all rail cars can be done with this method. If there are some dangerous or hazardous goods, Movement from receiving tracks to classification track is done by shunting engine or station locomotive. After the rail car pass, hump and turnout, it comes to the classification tracks. Typical number of classification tracks is between 20 and 40, but there are some stations with even more than that, up to 200. The capacity of marshalling yard is defined by number of tracks. On the right side we have departure tracks. This is the place where rail tracks arrive after they leave classification tracks. This is usually done by shunting engine. In the receiving track rail cars are again assembled for outbound trains, but in different composition and for different directions. Each of these trains is attached to a locomotive and in position to depart. 
pieces. Before they depart, second inspection has to be done. The art crew inspects if all rail cars are coupled, check brakes, other technical systems, and when the inspection is done, outbound train is ready to dispatch. If some of the rail cars are not properly classified, it is possible to pull them back for rehumping. Rehumped rail cars are moved to receiving track in some of the cuts and then humped again to the classification tracks. At the marshalling yard, there is also control tower, usually positioned close to the hump from which Station inspector or marshalling yard dispatcher can see and follow all car and shunting engine movement. Sometimes there are two control towers, one positioned close to receiving tracks and hump and one close to departing tracks. Operation process in flat yards is very simple to hump and similar to hump yards. Only difference is that rail cars movements are performed by a sun shunting engine. So there is no possibility for gravity movements. The biggest problem with marshalling yards is that time which cars spend during the process of changing from one inbound train to a new outbound train is very long. Sometimes it reaches up to 50% of whole time which rail cars spend to get from point A to point B. This implicates the different and effective operation technologies needs to be developed in order to reduce the time of rail car in marshalling yards. Most important operations that are performed in marshalling yards are related to sorting and rearranging rail cars through a system of tracks and turnouts. So there is whole science behind this. This is sometimes called rail car allocation. Rail car allocation at marshalling yard is one of the biggest problems and challenges. Considering that, it is very important to define strategies which help during the process so on convenient way and efficient way cars can be allocated. There are different strategies about uh, rail car allocation marshalling yards, such as single stage sorting, extended single stage sorting and multi-stage sorting. There are also some new models in investigating best possible car allocation such as models based on neural networks and colony optimization algorithm for solving dynamic wagon flows, etc. All these strategies are mostly done by computer and automated. In Europe, the biggest marshalling yard is located in Germany and it is called Maschen. This is also the second biggest marshalling yard in the world. And the world's biggest marshalling yard is located in Nebraska, USA. It is called Bailey Marshalling Yard. This marshalling yard has more than 200 classification tracks, 17 receiving tracks, 16 departing tracks and two humps located on eastern and western side of the marshalling yard. In Asia, biggest marshalling yard is located in India and is called Mughal Sarai Junction. Those are just some of the largest marshalling yards, but there is much more. Most countries have at least one marshalling yard. USA is the country with highest number of marshalling yards, but China has high number as well. Besides all described facilities, there are also some other facilities that are integrated in some marshalling yards. These are facilities that have different purpose and some of them are repair shops for locomotive and cars, water tower, cleaning facilities, waiting facilities, etc. This would be all from this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and please like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you soon.